you don't want released in the public domain? Have you got information on your iCloud, your iPhone, the internet? Saucy photographs, perhaps? Maybe information pertinent to your business or your campaign. Graham Cluley, who is a computer security expert, gave a fantastic and knowledgeable talk on the different kinds of hacks that are happening out there. Now, watch this if you want to know how Hillary Clinton's emails were hacked. If you want to know about the different kinds of ransomware out there and why you should be careful about the kinds of people you're employing, the invisible people. So I hope you enjoy it and thank you for watching. What I'm going to do is I'm going to talk to you about nightmares, such as zero-day threats, exploits for which there are no patches. Well, how about state-sponsored cybercrime ready to hack into your organization? And of course, intelligence agencies are hacking into government, and they're even hacking into legitimate businesses. If you've got a customer who is of interest, to a state-sponsored uh, intelligence agency, they may well try and hack you. But you know what? If they're determined to get in, chances are they will find a way in. So what should be keeping us awake and terrified at night? I'm going to describe to you what I think is a nightmare. It's something like this. Here is an email which a guy called John has just received. It claims to come from Google, and it says, Someone has tried to hack into your email account. We've determined that they're based in Ukraine. You want to change your password. But now John is not a dumb guy. John does not instantly click on that button. Instead, he forwards his message to his tech support team. And the tech support team forward it to the head of support, saying, John's received this email. What should he do? And the head of support replies, and he says, Sarah, who's the support person, this is a legitimate email. John needs to change his password immediately and ensure two-factor authentication is in place. There's just one little problem. The head of IT made an elementary mistake. He had a keyboard fumble. You see, he says, this is a legitimate email. He meant, this is an illegitimate email. The email which appeared to come from Google didn't come from Google at all. And clicking on the link in the email from Google took you to a bit.ly address under the control of a group of hackers. But he clicked on that link. And unfortunately, once your email account has been compromised by hackers, that is really the crux of your online existence. The hackers can then begin to find out so much more about you, including your other communications, maybe your other passwords, because they dug out an email that John had sent the IT team saying, hey, can you remind me what my Apple ID password is? And the IT team said, yeah, of course we can. Your Apple ID password is runner 4567. Now the hackers had his Apple ID password as well, which meant they were able to log into his Apple account where he had not enabled two-factor authentication. And what's more, he was using that same dumb password to protect his Twitter account. And that was the first clue to the general public that something had gone wrong. Because that guy who'd had his accounts hacked had now posted a tweet saying this, I've switched teams, vote Trump 2016. And you're thinking, who is this guy, John? Well, here he is. His name's John Podesta. He was running the campaign for Hillary Clinton, her presidential campaign. He was basically the chief of staff. And he had been hacked. And the hackers, once they accessed all of his private emails and his work emails, scooped up all this information, what did they do with it? They gave it to WikiLeaks. Maybe that's not the reason that Hillary Clinton didn't win the presidential election, but it certainly didn't help her, and it changed the story, and it obsessed the media forevermore. All because this guy had received not a sophisticated hack, he received a phishing email, and he made the mistake of clicking on the link. 
just takes one member of your staff to make a mistake to have their email hacked. So that's a nightmare. And I'm going to talk to you about some of the other nightmares your company can have right now. Number one, WannaCry in some respects was just traditional ransomware. It uses the standard Pantone red color. Uh, which psychologists have found is the most likely to get you to pay up in Bitcoin. Um, it tells you you've only got a time limit to, uh, to pay your Bitcoins in order to decrypt your data and get your data back. But there was something very unusual about WannaCry, which is that it had this worm component as well. That's what made it unusual. It exploited a vulnerability in Microsoft code in order to spread very quickly between unpatched computers. WannaCry spread rapidly around the world, and people want to know who created that. And that's where the story gets so strange, because it was created by these guys, the NSA in America, the people who are responsible for securing America from attacks. So what's happening is intelligence agencies are finding vulnerabilities in the software which we run, and they are not telling the software vendors. They had this attack, they called it Eternal Blue, it was their name for it, and they kept it to themselves because they wanted to use it to hack into companies, to spy on people. Now, what happened was rather unfortunate, because the NSA got hacked themselves. A group called the Shadow Brokers got hold of the NSA's exploits and they published them on the web. Popcorn time is an unusual piece of ransomware. It doesn't just ask you to pay bitcoins to get your data back. It actually says, look, if, if getting bitcoins is too hard for you, what we'll do instead is we'll ask you to come on our side. If you infect two other people with our ransomware and they pay up, you get your data back for free. Another genius attack we've seen against schools and universities in the UK, in this particular case, it all starts with a phone call. They ring you up. They say, hello, it's the Department of Education here, and we are going to send some very important red tape documents to your head teacher later today. Uh, can you confirm their email address? Can you tell them that we need that returned by the end of the day? And of course, the email then arrives with the attachment, and your head teacher is expecting the email, clicks on the link, bam, the school or university is infected. And now they're also hitting smartphones as well. We've even seen ransomware which will display some child abuse images which they claim you have been watching on the internet. Let me explain to you right now how you, if you were criminal, could make millions and you don't even have to be technical. You don't have to write a single line of code. And it's called business email compromise. One of the other things which I think should be keeping your company awake at night. These are million dollar frauds which are taking place. What the criminals do is they pose as one of your top executives, your chief financial officer, your CEO. And they send an email to maybe someone in the finance department someone junior in the finance department. And they craft the email in such a way, you know, I'm a very busy man, I'm in a meeting, for goodness sake, we need five million euros moved into this bank account by midday. And people do it. How do these attackers target your company? How do they find out who to target within your organization? Well, there is an underground dark web website which has been collecting information about your company for years. It probably has an entry for you. It probably knows your job history and where you've been in the past and what company you've just joined and what department you work in. I said it was an underground dark web website. That wasn't entirely true. It's called LinkedIn. And if you go to LinkedIn, you can find out so much information about your organization. And you know what? You are giving it willingly and so are your staff. So when someone new joins your company, a potential attacker can find out who those new people are, can determine their email addresses, that's not hard, firstname.lastname at company.com, something like that. They can email them, claiming to be the head of finance, claiming to be the head of HR, and bam, they've got you. Now these attacks are beginning to become more sophisticated, and they're gathering information about your company. They're finding out who you actually legitimately do business with, your suppliers, your partners, people who they could then pretend to be. They create bank accounts in the name of your suppliers. 
and they contact your finance department and say, our bank details have changed. When we send you our next invoice, can you make sure you put the money into this account instead? And then they fake an invoice for genuine work, which that supplier has done for the targeted company. These kind of attacks are hugely growing right now. And the problem is they're exploiting a human weakness. Sometimes they're actually hacking the news or hacking the news wires. So you've got to think about what your crown jewels are and how you're going to protect those. There's a more difficult threat to deal with, and that is the insider threat. You've got to think about those people you've allowed into your organization, you've already given a network password to, you've already given an email password to. What are they going to do with that information? Are they leaving you under a cloud? Were they planted there to steal information? And what about the invisible employees? What about the people who kind of go unnoticed? The maintenance people, the people who fix the water cooler, the people who hoover around your desks at 9 p.m. at night. They have access to your computers. And what about the security guards as well? Be very careful about the people coming into your company, including your staff, including these invisible workers who may be stealing data, may be planting something. It's a hard problem to manage. What you want to instill in your staff is if you see anything suspicious, let us know so we can look into it. So foster that kind of atmosphere inside your organization. Oh my God, that's how they did it. That's how they hacked into Hillary Clinton's emails during the US presidential election. And while Donald Trump was talking about his policies, Hillary Clinton was defending what was in her emails. What a distraction. Perfect, fantastic for the hackers and those people that paid for that to be done. But poor Hillary and poor John. But if you are doing a campaign of any kind, and you need to keep confidential information, then just be extra, extra, extra cautious. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe to see more and thank you for watching.